sincerity. We have hitherto discussed how sincerity plays an important role in gaining sustenance or in having our hardships removed. One of the offshoots of sincerity is to do good deeds secretly, to make a concerted effort to do good deeds when and where no other human being is there to witness them being performed. Once, Ibn Mukendir went out to pray during a dry spell. As he was supplicating near the pulpit of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Medina, he noticed a man whose head was lowered, and he heard him say, My Lord, the dry spell has become very difficult for your slaves, and I swear by you, my Lord, that you will indeed provide rain for them. Within an hour, clouds began to approach, and shortly thereafter, it began to rain. Now, Ibn Mukendir made it a point to acquaint himself with every scholar and righteous man in Medina. But here was a man whom he did not know, and who appeared to be righteous, for his supplication was quickly answered. He made haste and followed the man to his home. And shortly after the man entered, he knocked on the door. Upon being admitted inside, Ibn Mukendir saw very few material possessions and realized that the man was poor. He also discerned, based on the man's rough hands and on the materials he saw scattered about, that the man had been busy crushing wheat, a task that only poor people occupied themselves with since they could not afford to buy bread. How are you doing? asked Ibn Mukendir. The man answered politely, yet he seemed to be taken aback by the openness of the stranger. Noticing the man's nervousness, Ibn Mukendir quickly explained the reason for his visit. A short while ago, I heard the oath that you made by Allah. Do you not have enough money to free yourself of the burden of the task that you are occupied with, so that you can concentrate on performing deeds for the hereafter? Here, the man realized that he had been found out, and he knew that if the stranger went out and spoke to others about him, he would soon become famous and people would take him to be a pious man. And so he said, Do not mention me to anyone, and do not mention what happened until I die. And do not return to my home, for if you do, you will make me known to others. Even though Ibn Mukendir promised not to tell anyone about him or about how his supplication was quickly answered, the man was not satisfied, and he feared that even if others knew about him, Ibn Mukendir would still, when he saw him, think him to be a righteous man. He moved from his home and traveled to another city. No one from Medina ever saw him again, and no one knew where he went. Much later, when people learned his story, his neighbors grieved for having lost a righteous man and his supplications. They actually blamed Ibn Mukendir, saying that he was the reason why the man left Medina. What concerns us in this story is that the pious man did good deeds not for people or for fame, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he hated for others to see the good deeds that he performed. When it came to performing good deeds, he would keep matters between him and Allah. It is exactly that sincerity which our pious predecessors were known for and which we should strive to achieve. For it is because of their sincerity that their supplications were not rejected. When we invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, we may even refer to past good deeds that we had performed sincerely for Allah. 
thus increasing the likelihood of our supplications being answered. This point is clearly illustrated in the following narration, which is related in Sahih al-Bukhari. As three men were walking together, it began to rain. And so they sought refuge in a cave. But after they entered it, its entrance became blocked. And they all feared that they would remain stuck in the cave and die as a result. They then said to one another, By Allah, nothing will save you except for sincerity. So let each man among you supplicate with what he knew himself to be sincere about. One of them said, O oh Allah, I had an employee who would work for a measurement of rice. But then he left without taking it, meaning without taking his wages. I betook myself to that measurement of rice and I planted it. From the proceeds of what grew from that, I purchased cows. He later returned to demand his wages. And I said to him, Go to those cows and steer them away, meaning they are yours. He said, All that you owe me is a measurement of rice. I said, Go to those cows, for they are indeed from the proceeds of that measurement of rice. He then steered them away. O oh Allah, if you know that I indeed did that from fear of you, then provide relief for us. The boulder that blocked the entrance of the cave then moved, making an opening, but not one large enough for them to leave through it. The second man among them said, O oh Allah, I had two very old parents. And I used to go to them every night with the milk of a sheep that I own. One night, I was slow to go to them. And by the time I reached them, they had already fallen asleep. Meanwhile, my wife and my dependents were crying from hunger. But I would never give them drink before first giving drink to my parents. I disliked the idea of waking them up. And I equally disliked leaving them because they might not be able to see the drinks when they were going to wake up. So I continued to wait until the break of dawn. O oh Allah, if you know that that was from fear of you, then provide relief for us. The boulder then moved, making an even wider opening, but one that was still not wide enough for them to pass through to safety. It was wide enough, however, for them to be able to see the sky through the hole, and they were instilled with a great sense of hope. Then the last among them spoke. O oh Allah, I had a female cousin who was among the most beloved of people to me. I tried to seduce her but she refused, saying that she would only have me if I came to her with 100 dinars. I searched out for that amount until I was able to get it. I then went to her with it and gave it to her. She allowed me to come to her, and when I was seated between her legs, she said, Fear Allah! and do not break the seal without having the right to do so. Meaning, do not make me lose my virginity in this unlawful manner. I stood up and left, leaving the 100 dinars with her. O oh Allah, if you know that I did that from fear of you, then provide relief for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then provided relief for them. The boulder moved, making a sufficient gap for them to go out to safety. Thus, it was through the sincerity they had in performing those deeds that Allah provided a way out for them from a very difficult situation. Humbleness and a Sound Outlook We often look around us and see two matters that are confusing to some. 
the pious person whose supplications seemingly go unanswered, and the wicked person or the disbeliever whose supplications are answered. First, let us consider the situation of the righteous believer who constantly supplicates, though his supplications go unanswered. Such a person must realize that he is being tested and that he must be patient. He must remember the saying of the Prophet wasallam, The slave of Allah continues to remain upon a good situation as long as he does not hurry by saying, I supplicated, but I have not been answered. Next, he must reflect on his situation. Are his food, drink, and clothing lawful and lawfully derived? Is there a sin from which he did not repent? Or is his heart in a state of heedlessness when he invokes Allah? If he arrives at a negative answer to any one of these questions, then he must rectify his situation. In this regard, we have the example of Ibrahim ibn al-Khawas. May Allah have mercy on him. He once went out to stop others from perpetrating evil deeds. But when he left his door, he couldn't go any further. For there was a menacing dog standing in his way, barking and showing him his teeth. Ibrahim quickly retreated inside. He performed two units of prayer and then went out again for a second time. This time, the dog looked docile. It was wagging its tail as if it were pleased with Ibrahim. He was later asked about what had happened, and he said, I myself had committed an evil deed. After the dog prevented me from leaving, I returned and repented from my sin. And you saw what happened after that. Even if one comes up with positive answers to the above-mentioned questions, he must take a number of matters into serious consideration. First, life is a test. And to pass the test that one is going through, one must be both patient and thankful. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wonderful is the affair of the believer. Indeed, his affair in its entirety is good, and that is for no one save the believer. If goodness befalls him, he is thankful, and that is good for him. And if harm afflicts him, he is patient, and that is good for him. Second, one might supplicate for something that he ardently desires, but by achieving that thing, he might end up sinning or losing out on something he may otherwise have gained. For example, it is related that one of our pious predecessors would ask Allah for the ability to go out for battle. But then he heard a caller call out, If you were to go out for battle, you would be taken prisoner and you would then have converted to Christianity. And how often is it that we long for things that are bad for us? And through his mercy and wisdom, Allah prevents us from achieving those things. And it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you, and that you like a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows, but you do not know. Third, when a believer is in need, he turns to Allah, asking him for help. Now, whether he is answered immediately or not, he is, by supplicating to Allah, performing an act of worship for which he will be rewarded. It is often the case that one who is leading an easy life forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. Such a person might need a hardship to wake him up and to make him remember his purpose in life. It is related that Yahya once cried out a great deal and then, when he fell asleep, he spoke to his Lord during a dream. He said, O oh my Lord, 
How much indeed I have invoked you, yet you do not answer me. He said, O Yahya, indeed I love to hear your voice when you invoke me for help. Fourth, one must remember the following sayings of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No Muslim prays with a supplication that involves neither sin nor the breaking off of family ties, except that Allah gives him for it one of three things. Either he hastens to answer his supplication, meaning he answers it in this world, or he saves it for him for the hereafter, or he wards off from him evil that is equivalent, meaning equivalent in degree to the good he is asking for. Now, let us consider the opposite situation, that of the disbeliever whose supplications are answered. When we look around us, we find no shortage of examples of people who, despite being wicked and evil, are materially well off. We must realize that such people are taking their paltry share in this life, saving nothing for the hereafter. When a disbeliever refuses to change his ways and rejects the message of Islam, then, as a reward for his haughtiness, cockiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might give him much in terms of material possessions and worldly comfort, thus leading him further and further away from the straight path. That is why one should never feel a false sense of security when he is successful in life. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives both to the righteous and to the wicked. And when he gives to the wicked, he does so in order to lead them away from the straight path. Therefore, even when things are going well for a believer, he should not become self-complacent. Rather, he should hope for Allah's mercy, yet at the same time, he should fear Allah's punishment. Driven by fear and hope, the believer constantly strives to better himself and to reach safety in the hereafter.